We're looking at the income tax formula. We're focused on line one income. Remember in the first half of the income tax formula is in essence an income statement, but just an outline, just a scaffolding other forms and schedules flowing into these line items. For example, the schedule C, the small business form, in essence, an income statement in and of itself with income minus expenses or business expenses and the net income flowing into here, line one on the income tax formula. First page of the form 1040, we're focused on line number eight, Schedule C would then flow into the Schedule 1, which would flow into here, the first page of the Form 1040. Here is a Schedule C, Profit or Loss from Business, where we could see the income and expenses, in essence, an income statement, income minus expenses. Information returns. What are they? How do we deal with them? If you make or receive payments in your business, you may have to report them to the IRS on information. Information. In returns. To understand them, let's first take a step back. Think about the tax system. We have an income tax system. Income then is bad for taxes. Obviously income is good in general, but if we have to report the income, it's gonna increase our tax bill generally. The IRS has an incentive to try to verify the income that we are reporting to make sure that we're paying the proper amount of taxes. When you look at normal financial transactions, there's usually gonna be someone providing goods and services. Someone's paying for the goods and services. The person providing the goods and services is gonna be receiving money generally, cash for the goods and services that they are providing having income, which is good for them, but it's also a taxable possible event if they're most likely gonna to have to report that income. The one that's paying for the goods and services may get a deduction possibly if they're a business and not, not an end user. Meaning if you're paying for like a haircut, then you don't get a deduction for your haircut generally, unless you're a politician or something, maybe you get a deduction for your haircut, I don't know. But if you're a normal, if you're a business that's paying for goods and services to another business or contractor, then you might get a deduction for it, which means that would be a tax benefit. So it's it's a bad thing because you have to have money going out, you're paying for goods and services, but it might be good for taxes because you get a deduction. The IRS has leverage on the payer in the transaction because they're the one that wants to get the deduction. So that means they're gonna be able to say, if you want the deduction, we want you to report the income to us on who you are paying. This is most clear in an employee, employer situation, which is why generally, if you think about the tone of what the IRS is saying, they usually want businesses structured in an employee, employer situation so they can have the most control over the employer to not only report the income that they're paying to the employees, but do the withholdings on the government's behalf. But if you don't have an employee employer situation, then they still possibly might want information on who you paid, such as processing the 1099 forms, right? So that's another format where they're saying, we're not gonna make you do withholdings, but we want you to tell us who you gave the money to. And if you don't, we'll penalize you. And again, they have the leverage on the person that is paying so that the recipient of the money, they can double check and make sure that they're reporting their taxes. So that's the general structure. That's, you always kind of want to keep that framework in mind. The IRS used to have a system more of an audit type of system, kind of like if you were on a freeway and police officers are pulling people over for speeding. They're not going to catch you every time you're speeding, but if they do catch you, then they're gonna have a ticket that's high enough that it's gonna prevent you from speeding. Audits used to be similar. They used to basically random, random audits used to be the primary tool that they would have. And if they audit you and catch you then cheating, then they would have penalties on it. But now more and more, they're becoming more intrusive, meaning they want to get the information beforehand. And they can do that by getting inserting themselves within the financial transaction requiring where they have leverage which is on the payer side of things to report more and more on who they're paying the money to so that's generally what we have here so the irs compares payments shown on the information returns which each person's income tax return to see if the payments were included in income so you must give a copy of inf information return you are required to file to the recipient or pay payer in addition the forms described below 
uh, you may have to use other returns to report certain kinds of payments or transactions. So notice when you think about 1099 forms and W-2 forms for that matter, we think about them as something we have to give to, to the person that did the work kind of to help them generate their tax return. And again, that's usually the perspective that's gonna be the angle that will be given when you're like researching this from the government, of course, as well. But obviously what they really want is for you to give that information to the government, right? So that they, so they have the 1099, so they can double check that the person is reporting that income on, on their taxes. So for more details on information returns and when you have to file them, you can see the general instructions for certain information returns. You can find that on the IRS website. 